I've just finished cleaning out my working pantry behind me and I found some I can't script that and you see what I'm saying I just I, my video <sighs> take 250 virginia <laughs> Hi sugar cookies, welcome back. For those of you who are new around here, I'm Cookie, your lifestyle. And you're watching a lifestyle channel. <laughs> I've just finished cleaning out my working pantry behind me and I found some items that um, expired a few days ago or getting ready to expire, such as these uh, crushed tomatoes. None of this is sponsored. This is just what I found and had on hand. And I have these tomatoes like this and uh, cherry red peppers, a can of organic refried, refried, refi re <laughs> try again Shut girl, up. try again. Organic refried beans, this right here, look that, esto. And I found a can of Rotel. I have some whole kernel corn. Now these are all non-GMO. And I found a box of crusty sweet corn, muffin corn bread mix. And I'm gonna do something with that. So let's see what I come up with. I'm so excited because I'm venturing into food preservation. I've already started doing that by fermenting some things. I made fermented honey garlic. It's still on my counter doing an, its thing and bubbling. I'm so excited. I did some pickles. I also made some pickled garlic. I've, oh my gosh. And I've been interested in things like that since I was a kid because I did grow up partly in Puerto Rico and my mom had her garden and she was uh, self-sustaining for quite a bit. And I remember bartering across the road at the chick, you know, to uh, get eggs and things like that. And it was, it's a memory that I like and I enjoy things like that. My husband is also working on a design to uh, create some raised, garden beds in the backyard uh, so that I can start gardening. I'm also gonna be getting some towers. Did you know that this is a lifestyle channel and that's gonna be part of my lifestyle as well? I'm so excited to see what these fingers can produce with the help of God. So I'm looking forward to being able to harvest some of my own fruits and vegetables here. And so, oh, and look at the cutest thing. I got this at Marshall, the silicone mold. Isn't that cute? So that's what I'm gonna be baking, my cornbread. In. I already have my oven preheating at 350 so you know I think I'm gonna make some rice and corn Puerto Rican style and I'm going to probably make a like a tomato onion garlic uh, um, sauce base and then I'm gonna freeze it and uh, let's see what else I come up with okay so let me get my apron <laughs> so I'm so glad I've been watching a lot of people on YouTube one of the people that I watch over and over again is Becky from Acre Homestead. I also watch Cassandra from Becoming a Farm Girl. And she's out in Maryland. She lives in a town home and she has it urban. She lives urban, but she's becoming a farm girl and she has so many great ideas. And I love watching both of them because they really have encouraged me to take the plunge into food preservation and I'm a foodie I love to cook I love developing developing recipes like right here I already have some marinated chicken that chicken I'm going to be baking and I want to take advantage and be efficient and take advantage now that my oven is on and bake some cornbread and uh, sear the chicken in the oven and let's see what else I can do I'm trying to really go into a uh, minimal waste to no waste type of kitchen situation and uh, let's see what this uh, urban girl can do as well hello <laughs> just gonna grab about three cups of rice my video the disrespect the pool I'm gonna pick through this and I'm gonna wash my rice wash your rice people no, but cookie nothing. You don't know the critters and the things that pee and crawl and walk on these things. This is handled, it's processed. Just wash it, wash it. I already picked through the rice. And if you wanna know, this is long grain rice. That's just what I had on hand. And I'm going to rinse it until the water runs clear. 
that's gonna take a little bit so be patient what that does is it gets rid of the excess starch and before the uh, nastiness and it also helps the rice to be less sticky while I'm at it I'm also going to wash the top of these cans as well with hot soapy water you're gonna want to do that why cookie I'm glad you asked because it doesn't matter how pristine or how organized a warehouse or a stock room is there's food there so you're gonna find some critters and roaches or whatever and they leave things that um, you know they dehydrate and they remain on the can so you don't want to do that you can get really sick from that and also from rodent droppings or whatever just wash your lips that's all it's your health it's your health wash your stuff people please all right so i got all of these cans nicely washed and oh wait i gotta dry this one a little better oh okay. did i wash it okay try that one really well now I want to show you that I have some of these expired June 30th and then this one expired the end of August now don't worry I did my research on the food safety website and as long as something's not open you know it's fine of course always do your look test your smell test and taste test as well it's gonna be fine it's about food preservation I don't want to waste anything as much as I can and uh, so let me get to opening these cans I'm just coming up with this on the fly just like that it's there's not really a recipe for this but how exciting watching me open cans <laughs> I appreciate your time this is inspiration for me I hope that this is inspiration for you to um, do some consider doing some homesteading now homesteading is not just about having land and animals and uh, gardening and things like that it's more about of a way of life you can do some homesteading from an apartment food preservation and a more uh, a more sustainable way of life as much as possible just like that one more again because I'm gonna use it for the Puerto Rican style arroz con maíz or for my Mexican or South American friends elote and I know that in different Hispanic countries corn is pronounced differently in Puerto Rico is maíz these will expire at the end of September so I want to or mid-September so I want to use these up and give these a good rinse isn't that pretty look at that yellow that's so pretty I like to rinse everything get that excess preservative off of there and get the salt and sodium yep right from my garden I suggest to keep the critters at bay as much as possible and the raccoons and other things and bears. Rinse your cans out with soap and water and get rid of all the excess food in there. I'm telling you, that helps. My oven is already preheated to 350 and I have a pan in there, which is a great tip to economize on oil and calories and things and browning up your meat beautifully is to preheat the pan inside. Look, look, look. This is really hot. Now, prepare for the sear. See that? Aren't these beautiful? They've been marinating for a couple of days. I did this in my food prep. Listen, listen, you listening? juicy I'm gonna let that bake for about maybe a good 40 minutes but uh, I'm gonna go with the other stuff and still keep an eye on my chicken because I want them to be nice and juicy and see it mm.
Here I have a spread of things that I'm going to be using for my food preservation for the rice with the corn or arroz con maíz, which is this. Um, I'm also, I have some things out to zhuzh up this can of organic refried, be refried beans. And I'm going to be using some of my garlic confit. And this is the oil from the garlic confit that I separated. I'm going to use this as a base for my uh, tomato oniony sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just wanted to show you that this is the date. Come on, camera, focus, and let me be great. The date on there is 8-31-2023. And then these are, let's see, June, what is it? June 30th, 2023. So, I, like I said, I've already checked online, make sure food safety, those haven't been open until today. And then here, I have my own sofrito. You can go on my playlist and find my recipe for my own sofrito, which is the cousin or kin to our Caribbean brothers and sisters. It's called green seasoning, I believe. And the other one is epis as well for our Haitian brothers and sisters. And then here I have a cousin as well to a habanero pepper, except these are not spicy, these are sweet. This just bumps up the flavor. And then here I have a paste, don't drop it, cookie, that I make with culantro, cilantro, some of these peppers that I just showed you, and lots of garlic, and I just ground it up, and this just bumps up the flavor with a, a few other tidbits that are special to me, my own recipe. I'm sorry, that's just my recipe. <laughs> and then I have garlic paste here, chicken broth for the rice that I'm making. I love this Arab spice blend. Oh my gosh, bouillon spice blend, delicious. Amazing, it has some fennel in it. I have some onion powder, turmeric, and of course black pepper to activate the turmeric and some basil. And let's see, oh, I have some peppers that I'm gonna be using, some chopped bell peppers, green bell peppers at that. And this seasoning blend, I'm going to be using some of that as well. So, all right, I have the, the rice washed and uh, some, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, olive oil. And uh, let's get to cooking. In this pot, I'm making the base sauce that I can use for many other things and applications. And I'm gonna add some of the um, confit oil. This is already preheated, preheated now. It does get cloudy, but as it heats up, it just, oh, is a beautiful goldeny color. Now you can use this as marinade, add it to dressings and vinaigrettes and things like that. Brush it on at the end when you've grilled something. It's amazing. And I'm also going to use some of the garlic confit as well. Gonna add that to the base. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Love that. Now, if this garlic like that um, kind of is not your thing, it's more of a texture thing, you can mash these up as well because these are roast and they turn a little sweet and they're nice and soft and delicious. Mix this around a little bit. Raise up the heat a little bit. Now you don't want to walk away from this. Mmm, look at that. Do we see? Do we see? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Delicious. I love beautiful food. Oh, I smell that already. Did you activate your smell vision button? <laughs> Ooh. Oh. In this pot, I'm going to add a little bit of some olive oil as well. So that I'm going to add the green chopped peppers. I love that sound. I'm gonna save half of this for the refried beans. This smells so good. Now I did smash some of the garlic, but I am going to be freezing this and when I defrost it, I probably will blitz this and 
get it to a more smoother consistency or I might just leave it like this. My kitchen, my rules. Your kitchen, your rules. My sofrito and the ají dulce. To this pot right here. Oh my gosh. As soon as that sofrito hits that hot oil. Ooh, I'm gonna bring the garlic paste to the party. Just like that. Mm -hmm. A dollop, two dollops, yeah, why not? It does get a little clumpy because there is no caking agent in here to keep it from clumping. So you're gonna have to go in there and declump it. And that's what happens with natural powders that you make at home and things. Some turmeric, gonna give it beautiful color as well. All these are natural so they do cake up. It doesn't have a caking agent. Do you see that? That clump in there? Oh, this smells so good. Just letting this saute really well and then I'm gonna add this special blend. That's a beautiful paste consistency. Now I'm going to add the two small bay leaves some black pepper that's needed to not only just impart flavor but it also activates the turmeric um, let's see give this a good stir now I'm gonna add my washed rice and I like to clean as I go I don't know about you but I like to do that do you like to clean as you go Look at that, the color is already developing beautifully. We're going to saute this rice. You're gonna mix this until everything is well incorporated. And then we're gonna go in with the corn and the basil and the broth and things. This is 32 ounces of chicken broth and I used all of it. And then I added a, about a cup and a half of water for three cups of rice. And I'm gonna give this, as you can see, a good stir and tasting anytime you add any liquids any kind of liquids at all you're going to adjust the flavor profile so always taste your food sugar cookies always taste your food and I'm gonna taste it again to see if I need to season it with salt pepper whatever isn't that a beautiful golden broth that's what the turmeric does to that and I love that I'm giving it a good taste it tastes really really good for this amount of rice, after covering it, I'm going to let it simmer and let the uh, liquid absorb for about a good 55 minutes. I'm going to keep a good eye on it. And then I'm moving on to this sauce right here. Oh my gosh, I wish that you could smell my cocina. It smells delicious up in here. I love the fact that um, I'm using these items. I'm preserving them, not letting them go to waste. I was struggling trying to get this out, so I decided to just open the pack. And as you can see here, that was more efficient. <laughs> work harder. No, not work harder. Oh my Lord. Work smarter, Cookie, not harder. <laughs> stir and stir. This was delicious. Now I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to this because me and tomato sauce uh, kind of don't get along sometimes. So I have to add just a little bit of sugar to bring down the acidity level. You can also use balsamic glaze if you'd like to. And I'm gonna give this a good taste and it was absolutely delicious. Now this base I'm going to use for several applications, but I'm glad that I'm able to preserve it, let it come to room temperature and then freeze it. I have my cast iron skillet heating up because I'm going to dry char the rest of these veggies right here. Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> no worries, just a little bit, just for a little flavor for my refried beans. Let me raise the heat on that. I bring the heat. Yes, the art of double tasking and being efficient. 
those sweet and spicy peppers. I gave them just a little rinse, but I also saved some of the brine that came with it because that just gives flavor. It's also a great probiotic. I'm going to add some of my garlic paste that I make and I'm going to be mindful because the paste also has some salt in it already, just garlic and salt. And these, oh, I'm almost at the end of my pickled purple onion. Say that fast five times. Gabe. I, you saw I gave that a good shake. Now I'm going to make another batch, but I'm going to save some of the pickling in there. And I'm going to add that to this mix and a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit of that probiotic brine, which is delicious. A little bit of lemon just to brighten things up. While the refried beans are cooking, this is what I'm doing. This looks so, so good. I snacked on it a little bit before I actually had the whole food tasting. These are delicious. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I add a little bit of oregano that I like to crush in between my hands. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely. I love beautiful food. How about you? Now sugar cookies, I know that this may not be the traditional way that you're used to seeing refried beans if maybe perhaps you're from the southwest or you're of mexican background or south american however i do enjoy refried beans <laughs> i'm from a spanish rican background however my husband is part hungarian and his mother used to make some banging refried beans now the way that i'm making it you know i just like it to have a little bit just more bump up the flavor now at that point I realized that I was supposed to refry the beans first but don't worry I saved it I saved it and I did the best that I could don't come for me don't judge me okay this it's gonna be okay it's gonna be all right and it's going down the same hatch anyway but why did I think that I could mix this up what am I doing with that little spoon what am I doing hmm? and uh, yeah so now I'm adding some cumin and you season this with the spices that you like because why your kitchen your rules 